clearly, for Justin Trudeau, this is the easy part. The NYU convocation crowd is friendly. The introduction is warm. An avowed feminist. Phrases that Canadians have heard many times take on a new context in the U.S. Diversity doesn't have to be a weakness. It can be our greatest strength. Comments about leadership that seem to hint at the America first president, but never name him. This is the antithesis of the polarization, the aggressive nationalism, the identity politics that have grown so common of late. Then there's the other part of Trudeau's job abroad. I just want to say what a pleasure it is to, to be here uh, at BlackRock, an opportunity to talk about uh, investing in Canada. The trickier terrain. Yeah, we're always looking for how we can uh, collaborate further. In meetings with politicians and business leaders, he pushes Canada, all while NAFTA's future remains uncertain. The U.S. Congress said it would need something signed this week in order to get a deal passed this year. But negotiators aren't there yet. Stephen Harper's former economic advisor applauds Trudeau's approach to building U.S. support. The truth is that Canada doesn't loom very large on the U.S. political radar. And so having domestic voices championing um, Canada's position or Canada's perspective uh, is essential. But acknowledges there are still outstanding issues preventing a new NAFTA deal. This is going to take some time because many of the issues that remain are thorny and complicated. Now, Canadians are also fighting amongst themselves over the future of the Trans Mountain Pipeline, and that could make some U.S. investors nervous about Canada. Trudeau will speak before New York's Economic Club tomorrow, and he'll make his pitch to win over that crowd, but it's safe to say it will be a bit more challenging than that Yankee Stadium love-in. Catherine Cullen, CBC News, New York.